Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Timeless Truths from the Bible. And today we're going to look at the subject, The Message of the Bible Has Not Been Changed. It's an introduction to New Testament textual criticism as we continue to go through this wonderful subject of the Bible itself. All right. The living God has revealed himself to humanity by means of a limited number of sacred books. These writings are found in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. The 66 books of the Bible are the only written works that God has divinely inspired and revealed to the human race. Now, this being the case, it is absolutely essential that we know, as best as we can, how the text of these books originally read. In this book, we will look at the subject of discovering the original text of the New Testament. In other words, what did the books of the New Testament say when they were first written? How do we know that they read the same way today as when originally composed? Has the message been changed as it's been transmitted throughout history? Now, in another volume, we will examine the evidence for the text of the Old Testament. All right, so to answer these questions, we're going to consider the subject of New Testament textual criticism, the science of reconstructing written text. We're going to look at the various methods used to reconstruct ancient documents when the originals are missing, and this will give us an idea of how people go about attempting to reconstruct what God's word originally said. Now, this introductory study will give us the assurance that it is possible to recover the original message of the books of the Bible. Therefore, we're going to conclude that God's word to the human race has not been lost, added to, or subtracted from. In other words, it will give us supreme confidence that when we read our present English translations or whatever other language we're reading the scripture in, we are reading the same message that God has originally given to humanity. So here's our first question. Has the New Testament been transmitted accurately to us? So as we begin looking at the subject of the New Testament's reliability, we want to start by making a number of observations about the evidence for the trustworthiness of Scripture. Observation number one, the Bible has already proven to be God's word. Now, the first observation is fundamental to our inquiry. In some of our other, other books that we've written, we have clearly documented the evidence for the supernatural character of the Bible. To begin with, we have discovered that the scriptures are historically accurate, specifically the Old Testament, as we explained to you in our book, Ancient Mysteries of the Bible Solved, Volume 1. Now, we've also discovered that the scripture contains past predictions that have been miraculously fulfilled. One of our books on Bible prophecy is called 50 Biblical Prophecies Made and Fulfilled, or God's Work in History. And we find something like 240 or 250 specific details in these 50 prophecies that were fulfilled in the past. Now, in addition, the Bible also supernaturally predicts the situation in the world in the last days of our present age, before the return of Christ. We've documented what the Bible says in our book, 25 Signs, we're near the end. And as we've mentioned many times, there are some 70 specific details in these 25 signs that have already been miraculously fulfilled, and there's 30 others that are in the process of being fulfilled. So in other words, the scripture has accurately predicted what our world will look at, will look like at the time immediately before Christ returns. And here's our therefore. Therefore, any unbiased look at the evidence speaks loud and clear. The Bible is God's supernatural word to the human race. This is our first observation. Observation number two, God has spoken. He has not stuttered. There's a second observation that needs to be stressed. The Lord has not only supernaturally spoken to the human race, but he has done it in a way that is understandable to the masses. Indeed, it would be of no help whatsoever if God had given us a confused revelation of himself. However, when we read and examine what the scriptures say, we find very simply that the Lord has handed us a very simple straightforward picture of himself and of his message for humanity. It is indeed a book with a very clear message from beginning to end. Observation number three, the New Testament has come down to us accurately. All right, this is the thrust of the entire book. We will discover the scriptures are not only understandable, but they've also been transmitted to us in a reliable manner. In other words, the various books of the New Testament say the same thing as when originally written. So to sum up, from this book, we'll reveal that the message of the New Testament has not been changed or altered in any way throughout his history. His, throughout history, this is the key. Now, observation number four, we don't have to resort to guesswork to establish the original text of the New Testament. Now, this brings us to a very important point. 
When all the evidence is examined, we will conclude that we will not have to resort to guesswork to establish what the original text originally said. While there are indeed places in the text where there is some question as to how it originally read, the sheer mass of evidence gives us confidence that the original text has not been lost, and we will have much to say about that in our book. Now, something else that's extremely important, observation number five. Consequently, after looking at all the evidence, we will conclude that God's word, the Bible, is without error. It is a trustworthy revelation in all that it records. So, if the Bible is the divinely inspired word of God, then we should not expect to find divinely inspired errors, and we do not. And finally, observation number six, we could read our Bibles today with the confidence that we are reading God's word. Finally, we conclude that when we read the various English translations of Scripture, or whatever translation we may want to use, we are reading the very words of God to the human race. Of course, when we speak of translations, we're referring to those that are produced by Bible-believing Christians, not the mere trendy ones that come and go. We will specifically explain which ones we're referring to in this book. Now, an important point was written by a man named Stephen Neal about 60 years ago, and it's as true as ever. He says, the very worst Greek manuscript now in existence contains enough of the gospel in unadulterated form to lead the reader into the well of, into the way of salvation. He wrote that in uh, 1964 in his book, The Interpretation of the New Testament, 1861 to 1961. And basically what he's saying is a fact. No matter what manuscript you look at, the gospel's still there. So in, to begin with, unless we start with these assumptions, we will be like a ship stranded in, in the middle of the ocean, driven by the waves and the wind without anything to guide it. Fortunately, the living God has spoken, and as we will observe, he has given us more than sufficient evidence to us, more than sufficient evidence to us that we can trust his revelation. Now, here's our next point. This is crucial. Is having a reliable text enough to prove the truth of Christianity? The first section of the book, we look at the basic questions that need to be answered with respect to the original text of the New Testament and its reliability. And what we will find is there sufficient evidence to believe that the text of the New Testament has come to come down to us in an accurate manner? In other words, the message has not been changed or altered as it's been transmitted. Indeed, the evidence for the trustworthiness of the Greek text with further confirmation that the message is the same from the early translations into languages such as Latin, Syriac, and Coptic, plus the writings of the church fathers all testify to the same message about Jesus Christ. This cannot be overemphasized. They all say the same thing, the same, men uh, same message. However, as we have mentioned, this by itself is not enough. For Christianity to be proven true, there are cer it certainly needs a reliable text that we can examine, but there has to be more than this. The events the text records must be historically accurate. They much, must match up with known reality. And we've already seen that in our book, Ancient Mysteries of the Bible Solved. This is exactly the case that we see. Now, the good news is, like we said, it can be verified. Uh, the New Testament deals with real people, genuine events, laws, customs, geographical locations. And uh, the good news is it fits up with the reality we know about the first century world. But there is one final step we must make. The fact that the scriptures have come down to us in an accurate manner and have shown to be historically true is still not sufficient. There has to be further evidence that God exists and that Jesus Christ is all that he claimed to be. Now, to the point, we document these necessary facts in another book called The Case for Christianity with three lines of evidence. Jesus' miracles, the prophecies he fulfilled during his first coming, as well as his resurrection from the dead. When one examines these various lines of evidence that the Lord has given to us, the verdict is clear. The message of the Bible is supernaturally confirmed to be true. Accordingly, there is every reason to trust that there is a God who exists, who has revealed himself to the world through his written word, the Bible, as well as through the person of Jesus Christ. And that's what we learned as we look at the totality of the evidence. All right, next time we'll move into another subject with respect to um, timeless truths in the Bible, 10 reasons to trust the Bible, as we'll give more evidence why the Bible is the trustworthy word of the living God. I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. Until next time, as always, may the Lord richly, richly bless.